This project began like most others do, as an ad on Kijiji. Now, I've never owned an e-bike, nor did I ever really want one, but there it was, a front e-bike hub motor, for free. The wheel did not spin freely. It was seized inside from some rusty buildup. Maybe it was left outside, or neglected in a damp garage. In any case, with a bit of scrubbing and WD-40, I was determined to get this wheel turning again. I quickly discovered that this e-bike hub motor was a brushless three-phase motor, meaning you can't just hook up a battery to it like one of my kids' toy cars and make it turn. You need to supply it with three sinusoidal power inputs that are out of phase by 120 degrees. Where would I get that from without investing much money into a wheel that might not work at all? So I got some cans and some duct tape and I devised a contraption that converts power from car batteries into three phase square waves. And voila, it looked like the wheel works after all. The next step was to find an actual e-bike controller. I found one on AliExpress. One can never be too sure about these no-name brand electronics from China, but for 30 bucks, with 93% positive feedback and 75-day buyer protection money-back guarantee, how bad could it be? After waiting a month, I finally got my controller. It looked exactly like the picture, with some cryptic labeling on the wires and no documentation or specifications. I guess whoever buys these things would know what they're doing. So I rigged together a throttle using a potentiometer and boy was I thrilled when I heard the sound of that first electric zing. The next challenge was to find a battery. As I quickly discovered, the most expensive part of an e-bike is the battery. Although you could use cheaper sealed lead acid batteries, they are incredibly heavy and even if you didn't care about range, you just can't get enough current output from the smaller ones to power the bike in a meaningful way. I didn't really want to fork out hundreds of dollars for a lithium e-bike battery, so I just made do with two drill batteries. I connected it all together and mounted the e-bike hardware onto an old mountain bike. It was actually pretty fun to ride. It didn't exactly zoom uphill, but it was enough to keep me from breaking a sweat. My wife even went on it for a spin. She thought it was underwhelming. And so I marked the project off as completed. That was until I found this real e-bike battery on Kijiji for $200. I know it's a little more than what I wanted to spend on a DIY e-bike I didn't really need, but what if? What if I had some real juice? What if I could convert the front hub to a rear hub so that it handled better and didn't spin out when I tried to accelerate? Could I make a DIY e-bike that looked somewhat legit? To convert the front hub to a rear hub, I needed to somehow mount some gears on it. There wasn't enough room to put on a full cassette, but I could mount a single speed freewheel in the back and just live with the triple chain rings in the front. I mean, with 500 watts of power, who would need more than three gears anyways? And so with a steel plate, a piece from an old English threaded bottom bracket, and a bit of creativity, I machined a threaded plate to bolt onto the wheel, which will receive a 16 tooth BMX freewheel. Now for the battery. It just looks kind of silly wrapped in a bag like that. I wanted it to look a little less MacGyver and maybe a bit more Cybertruck. I wanted to integrate the battery into the frame. So how do I do that while spending as little as possible? I started with an old iron horse bike frame. Yes, it was off Kijiji. It had definitely seen better days. Most importantly though, it was made of high tensile steel. I wanted it to be steel and not aluminum when I start drilling holes and welding onto it. This bike frame only had bosses for V-brakes and no disc brake mount. My wheel only had a disc brake and the rim wouldn't work with V-brakes, so I needed to make a mount. Satisfactory. After painting the frame with some Rust-Oleum, it was time to bring it inside to the lab. 
I first made careful measurements of the frame and then digitized it in Blender. Then I laid out where the components would sit. I think putting the battery along the down tube would balance out the weight of the hub motor in the rear. From there, I constructed an enclosure that would hold the battery in the controller that would be bolted directly into the frame. Then, I fired up my Ender 3 3D printer to build my model out of PETG. I used PETG because it's pretty easy to work with, yet strong and resistant to temperature changes, for use outdoors. Each of the eight sections took almost 20 hours to print. Next, I drilled holes into the frame and tapped them with screw threads. And finally, I assembled it all together. Now, from the change in the weather outside, you can kind of tell that this project has been going on for a long time. In fact, it has been over two years since I first got this wheel. So I must take this opportunity to acknowledge just how gracious my wife and kids have been, tripping over bike parts all the time and living with a half-built bike in the living room for months. But I can also say that it's been quite fascinating for my kids to watch this monstrosity slowly develop. A bit like watching a baby grow. Lots of trial and error. Anyways, I'd say it turned out pretty good. It kind of has a bit of a Cybertruck look to it. So what do I do with this e-bike that I don't really need and I don't want to sell and nobody would buy? As it turns out, about a week after I finished building this thing, I injured my leg and it became painful commuting to work on my regular bike. What great providence! As it happens, all these random parts all came together at just the right time to become a working e-bike and it's been taking me back and forth to work. But what's the moral of this story? What have I learned? Like, other than don't try and run 30 amps through connectors that are only rated for 12, and a cheap freewheel isn't worth it because the pawls break and the only way to get it off is to weld the inside to the outside. And you need a torque arm because the dropouts aren't enough to keep the axle from rotating and winding up the wiring like fishing line. But what else have I learned about myself? Well, as I zipped along the road, basically without pedaling, I had a strange feeling. If I had to call it something, I'd call it shame. Why? I'm not breaking any rules or taking advantage of anyone. Nobody cares what kind of bike I'm riding. This bike doesn't even look half bad. I'm even saving the environment by not driving to work. Why did I feel this way? Well, to put it into context, I've been riding my bike to work every day year round for more than 10 years. In fact, I'm the guy who is secretly counting how many people I can pass on the way home from work. I'm the guy who feels proud to have biked to work when everyone else called it a snow day. So after a little introspection, I realized that somehow I had this urge to tell everyone on the road that I can actually ride up this hill myself. That I've done it before with a broken 50 pound e-bike with three gears. That I'm actually quite strong. I'm the real deal. Why? I don't know. Nobody even cares. For me, commuting by bike started out as an effort to save money in the environment while getting some exercise. But maybe, without me realizing, it's become something I'll call work righteousness. That is, I feel righteous not by virtue of what I'm actually doing, but rather by the amount of work that I've put in. And in contrast, what everyone else on the road has not. Well, this is good. I think I've made some progress. I'll keep chewing on that thought, until my leg heals. Then it's back to chasing down e-bikes on my road bike.